Devin McCourty is brought to you by the top defense. If you've been injured, Catches Law Group at Catches, you pay nothing unless they win. They are the official law firm of the New England Patriots. And former New England Patriot Devin McCourty joins us right now, as he always does on Wednesdays on the Harbor One Hotline. Hey, Devin. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? I'm doing well. No complaints here. Just hanging out, watching my brother. Do the fit list on uh, Good Morning Football. <laughs> um, were you surprised that the Patriots did nothing yesterday before the deadline? Um, no, not really. I mean, well, I don't know. Well, I think some people get so excited. I, this is my biggest thing to NFL. People get so excited if you trade a player for draft picks. And then, like, I don't think anybody really follows, like, that draft pick and so somebody from the media posts is like two years later, you know, that draft pick from this trade ended up being so-and-so. <laughs> so to me, like if you have some players that you think, like I know Duggar's name and Uche's name came up and I know they could lose them in free agency, but like if they have a chance to keep them, would you rather have a player that you know is a good player or draft somebody else that you're not even sure about or what that you're like? So I don't know. I think, you know, I think, other than that, I just don't know like what else they could have gotten that takes the team from two and six to like playoff contention. Apparently, there were no calls whatsoever uh, about Mac Jones. Does that surprise you? Um, not really. I mean, overall, how many like Joshua Dobbs got traded because Kyler Murray's coming back, and Joshua Dobbs is known to just be picked up and go play good football after like being on a team for five or seven days. But, like, other than that, I, I just don't – quarterbacks don't get traded that much. I mean, I was kind of surprised. I thought even a guy like Jameis Winston would be, um, you know, somewhat, you know, in demand from a team like Minnesota. But I think I think a lot of teams look at their roster and they look at other quarterbacks on other rosters and say, I'd rather give my guy a shot, you know, if he's a backup or something like that, compared to just going and trading and giving away again these value trade, these value draft picks for somebody else. So I'm not really surprised by that. Dev, I get where you're trading for guys that can potentially help your team make a playoff push. I'm more on maybe you get rid of a few guys just so you can continue to suck and be in the top <laughs> five. If, if, if you're the GM of this team, are you doing what you can not to lose games intentionally, but are you doing what you can to make this team not as good as it needs to be so you can assure yourself of a top five, top three pick in the NFL draft? Uh, I don't have much GM experience, but if I'm a GM and you're telling me my future is tied to us winning games in the future, then, yeah, I want to I keep, keep this two win, three to four win max. Like I want to kind of stay at that borderline <laughs> so I do end up with a top pick. And I think I think we've seen that throughout the league. And I think especially, you know, as a player, when you talk to guys who were in some of these situations, like I talked to my brother when he was in Cleveland, like nobody's coming out saying like, hey, we need to lose. But like, you know, he was just on this morning talking about when he was in Cleveland that year, they traded Joe Hayden and Demario Davis. Like Demario Davis is still playing at a high level linebacker on New Orleans. Joe Hayden just retired. Like these guys were still playing good ball, but Cleveland was like, hey, we need to find more guys like Miles Garrett. Like, we need to keep finding those kind of guys in the draft. So they did that. And I think there is something to that. And then there's probably also something to the team saying, hey, like, we're 2-6 and six right now. Like, let's just keep, let's just keep this team. Like, we're, we're, we're doing fine in that. Do you think Robert, knowing Robert Kraft as well as you do, is he okay with that plan? Oh, no, RKK. I mean, I would say overall none of them are trying to lose. Like, I don't see – Anybody over there, I think, RKK, Bill, like none of them are in there saying, like, we're going to plan for the future. But like Wiggy said, if you put me in there at GM, I'm planning for the future. But I just don't think – I don't think any of them are wired that way, and rightfully so. Like when you've won as many championships as they won in that time, time span, you've never thought about losing. Like it's hard to now think about losing as you're getting, you know, towards the end of your career – as a coach and all of that stuff, like you're not like rebuild. Like I'm not trying to rebuild. I'm trying to figure out how to get back to being in the big dance. Devin, were you surprised at the Josh McDaniels firing? And if you were Bill, would you bring him back again? 
I was surprised that like it was done. It was done overnight. Like you wake up. I think they said like this happened around like one o'clock Eastern time. Um, but I think that situation you saw it play out right last week. They talked about the coaches and players meeting together to kind of voice um, their concerns and what they feel. So like once you start having talks like that, you know, I think as an owner, you probably sit there and say, all right. I might believe in this guy, but, like, if the players don't believe in it and then hearing some of the people talk about, you know, Mark Davis was meeting with some players and listening to what they had to say, like, that that doesn't bode well for you as a coach. And uh, obviously Josh and Dave went there together. Um, but I would not I would not be surprised uh, if Josh was back on staff. But I also, you know, if I'm Josh, like, hey, man, like, we still got four and a half years fully guaranteed, like, for this year, let's take a little let's take a little mental break for the rest of this season. See what you can do. Go around to other teams. Focus on becoming a better coach. And I would operate more along those lines. But um, I think for New England, like the guy, like Josh has had so much success over there. Um, I, I would be shocked if they don't at least call him and say, "Hey, do you want to come back and lend a helping hand in some sort?" And he's perfect, Devin, because he's free because he's getting paid by the by the Raiders. What is there yep. on the horizon with this team that makes you feel optimistic that things will turn around quickly? Quickly as in, like, be back in the playoffs and winning games next year? I mean, I I, I just think to be a fan in New England, like, you got to take the good with the bad. Like, you, you look at, again, you look at every other franchise, like, you're not able to just retool after being bad in a year and think, like, you're about to be – playing for a Super Bowl. So I just think this team is going to probably take a while to kind of build that back up. you got to get some guys in there that are huge difference makers. Like, that stuff takes time. Like, you get, you don't just turn around and, like, you're right back in the Super Bowl. So, you know, I think the optimism comes from a guy like Bill that's been there. He's done good things, and I know the last few years hasn't, you know, turned out well. But I think this team now is at a time where, you know, your last place in the AFC, as you move forward – you start making some decisions, then you get optimis- optimism about that. Like the decisions we make, the guys we start to bring in, I think that is what it what it turns into to be happy about. And I think overall, I think they'll be able to turn around quicker than some of these other organizations that we talk about who have been bad for like 25 years or whatever. Like I don't see that coming for New England, but I also don't see like 2024, this team's a contender to win the AFC. Like if it happens – that's awesome, but like if you're saying right now on this day, starting off November, do you think this team is you know a contender for the Super Bowl next year? Like I don't, I don't see that happening. Dev, well, it's interesting that you talked about your brother because, like you, I've never really been in the situation where midway through the season, I was out of a playoff hunt. I would, I wonder what's that like. I don't know if you've had this conversation for players that are in the locker room. I remember being in Minnesota one year, and it was like the last game of the season. We had no chance. And I remember talking to Leonard Little pre-snap, basically like, "Listen, bro, the ball's going away. You watch my back. I watch you." <laughs> you know. So what? What? What can? Like, what is it like for guys that are in the locker room right now, knowing they still got nine games to go? But there's no way they're making the playoffs. I, it, I almost feel like some of them are going to be checked out. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. In 2020, the last, I think, I know the last game for sure we were out. And I, I'm not sure if it was like the last two games, but somewhere along that line. And for me, that was the first time ever playing in a game where you're like, man, we got nothing. Like, <laughs> this is it. We played this last game and we know for sure, like, it's over where we're going home. And I mean, for one game, I think it's a lot easier than, you know, you're midway through the season and you know it's tough. But I agree with you. There are going to be players that are like, you know, this is BS, like this is blah, blah, blah. But then there's going to be guys that are trying to make a name for themselves. They're trying to stay in this league. They're trying to get paid. Um, but I think the hard thing is how do you keep everybody together? I think, I think effort-wise and, like, you know, what you put out there on film, guys can see that a lot clearer. But I think what you start to have and you got to fight is everybody being selfish, worried about themselves. So I know even my brother used to always say that to me, you know, being on bad teams, he was like, man, you know, sometimes you can have fun and still suck as a team where (laughs) you find joy in the other things, hanging out with guys, doing certain things. 
and then the insanity part of every week you do think you're going to win, and then you do have fun of like, hey, let's upset this team. Let's be like, all right, we're going to like this team. You're going to play Buffalo again towards the end of the year. Like, all right, let's have fun trying to ruin Buffalo's playoff chances. So I think there are things that, you know, turn into that. Uh, I think for them right now, I wouldn't hit, you know, the just end-all, be-all kind of button of like we're just showing up and seeing how much we lose by. But I think, you know, over these next few weeks, if they can't pile some wins together, it's hard to still stay focused, especially from a leadership standpoint, to stand in front of guys and tell guys, like, let's do this. We're a fan. Like, that starts to become really hard. Devin, big weekend for Rutgers. Do your Scarlet Knights ruin the Buckeyes' perfect season? <laughs> Oh, is it that big of a weekend? We're just playing Ohio State. It's no big deal for us. Like, we're used to these kind of big games. So, um, you know, noon start Saturday. Uh, we give them a tough thing. Uh, upset, I'm not 100% sure about. Um, but I'm I'm fully confident that this is probably the best team we've had in a year. So, uh, too bad for us we can't play teams like Boston College every week because then we'd be undefeated, Courtney. BC is on the up and up. One more win and we're bowl eligible. Thank you. Okay. Hey, right, nothing like having UConn on your schedule, oh, right? Okay, all right. It's always fun. Devin, it's always fun. Devin, uh, midway point of the season, I want your Super Bowl picks right now. Super Bowl picks right now. Um, let's go Eagles and let's go Cincinnati. Ooh, mm, wow. So Cincy. All right, okay. all right. I, for some reason, I'm, I want to scratch the itch of the Baltimore Ravens, but I never. Oh, that I, is a good one. But I never, never want to bet against Patrick Mahomes. I so, know, I, I, I know, but they, they got to get something going. They, they do. It's no, I just, get that. Like I, I was at two of their games live so far. It's just he makes so like, it, like to me, watching Kansas City is like watching Buffalo a few years ago. Like everything depends on. Mahomes dropping back, balls barely ever out of his hand on his back foot. It's always like, all right, get back there, look, scramble, make one of those like elite plays that we all go crazy about. And like, it's cool because he can do it, but like, I don't know how often he's going to be able to do that without losing. Like, I just think that's so tough right now watching him. Yeah, I I I, I agree with you to the, to that extent, but I think I am going to probably lean towards. Some about Baltimore. I mean, this could be their year. Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers mm-hmm. is doing a tremendous job. Um, the the Philly thing. I, for some, I I don't know what it was because I thought at the beginning of the season Philly was coming out a little bit slow and people kind of had their number. But AJ Brown, man, New England could have had him. Uh, yeah, I mean, they could have had a couple of those guys. That's my problem with the draft, right? Don't draft DK Metcalf. Everybody said. Don't draft him. He has injury history. Don't don't draft uh, Robert Gronkowski. He has a back injury. And then these guys coming to NFL, like all of these teams sitting there like, man, we passed on him because, you know, they said that's a terrible draft pick. And then you look at these guys. And then there's these no-brainers that you're supposed to pick. And then you look four years later, they're like out of the league or searching to try to get back in the league. And these are sometimes first and second round picks. Whereas to me, I'm like, we watch some of these guys play for four years or three years Man, I'd rather just pay that guy and have him and know that, like, I got a really good player than, you know, wait and hope that I'm drafting the right guy. I hope I'm drafting Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, which is really hard to do. But, you know, the draft is so valuable to, to all of these front offices, even though, like, for some front offices they continue to fail. And then you look at Philly and San Fran, they get a chance to get better players, Chase Young. They go out and get Chase Young like it's nothing. Philly goes out and says, hey, we need a new safety. They go get Kevin Byard and Pet. Like, I just think there's something to that, that when you can get guys to fill spots and you're like, yo, I'm just going to pay and get a player that I already know is good. I said, I hope and I draft a guy. I just think that makes so much sense. Devin, can't you do both, though? Like, I mean, you meant, you mentioned San Francisco, right? They they sign a guy like Javon Hargrave. They trade for guys like uh, like like Chase Young, but then they're drafting guys like Fred Warner and uh, Hufanga, and, you know, they get lucky enough to have a top-five pick, and they get Nick Bosa. They drafted Eric Armstead. So isn't it kind of like a really good balance of both and not necessarily just one or the other? Oh, no doubt about it. But you got to remember a few years, was that 2017? is when they hire Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. Like, 
that was coming off being really bad. So, like, they didn't just come up with the, with the top picks. They had the top picks for a couple years in a row. So each time you have that, you don't just have the high pick in the first round. You have high picks in every round. So if you actually do hit on those guys now, you've hit on a couple of those guys for a couple years in a row. You've built your foundation. Now, like, the time is to go get these other guys, especially when you have the rookie quarterback. I think they have showed the league. They've shown the league, like, hey, this is how to do it. Now, they haven't won a championship yet, <clears throat> But overall, they've been a top team in the league year in and year out, which you, I, I give credit to that. And even Philly, like they, they just won a Super Bowl. They beat us in the Super Bowl 2017 season. Then they kind of, you know, wasn't as good the next couple of years. End up with, you know, get rid of some guys, get some draft picks, draft pretty well, get a uh, hit on um, Jalen Hurst working out for you, and then you go do the rest. You go get other guys to uh, fill out your team instead of just, waiting and waiting in the draft. So I definitely agree, but I think some of the draft picks come off being bad, which I think when you talk about the Patriots, they just had they haven't been which sucks to say they haven't been bad enough to get some of those top five picks. Um, which I know everybody like talks bad about Bill and how he drafts, but like he's like my whole time there, you never had a top five pick, never had a top ten pick. I think Mayo was the last top ten pick. Um, and before injuries, like Mayo, all pro, pro bowls, like he was a hell of a player in New England. So um, I think that is, I think that is the recipe to have success in this league. All right. Before you go Sunday, Pats commanders, who do you like? I like the Pats. Okay. Can I ask one question before he goes? I know we put him on the spot about his Super Bowl predictions. I want to put him on the spot. Pats get the top three pick. You're the GM. Who you drafting? If I had to say right now, if this guy, if Caleb Williams is what I've read about him, then to me you have to say Caleb Williams. If he's like the guy that is the next great quarterback to ever play in the game, like, I mean, again, it's the draft and he's coming out. So you get a, but like, I feel like people are naming this guy like in the Mahomes and like all of these guys that like when you watch him, you're like, man, like if he could be Patrick Mahomes, I just think it's too hard to walk away and say like, hey, we had a chance to draft this guy, but we didn't. And then you watch him to go on to be, you know, like how many teams are mad that they didn't draft Patrick Mahomes when they had the chance, and now they have to play against him, you know, if you're in that division twice a year and he's killing you. So uh, I think if there's a chance and, and Caleb Williams is really supposed to be the guy that everybody thinks, then I think you definitely take him if you can get him. Devin with a massive cannonball off of Mac Island right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Massive. The no, splash. I, but, like, to me, but ten to out me, of ten. like, who else? If we, name, if we name any other team with a quarterback, non, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, like if Seattle ends up with that pick, Seattle should draft Caleb Williams. Like, there's probably 15, 20 teams if they end up with that pick. You better take a guy if they say he's a generational talent. Like, you better take him. Like, Houston lucked up. Not Houston. One of these teams lucked up who had a chance. The Jets. You had a chance to maybe get Trevor Lawrence. And you win a game and you don't get Trevor Lawrence. Like, look at what that's done. Like, Trevor Lawrence now looks like he's going to be one of the better top five quarterbacks going forward. So, I think if you have a chance to get a top five quarterback, you go and get the top five quarterback unless you have a top five quarterback on your team. But, hey, but wouldn't Bill just trade back to 26 to take a guard out of Chattanooga? I mean – Think of all the prospects you can get in return. Well, if you do get the first pick and you can trade back and get a ton of picks, you just like Chicago. That looks great, right? You trade back, and now they're like, oh, well, we don't know if Justin Fields is a guy. I mean, C.J. Stroud looks pretty good to me. I mean, Bryce Young, like those guys, those guys look. So I just think, like, you look at Chicago, they're hoping what, again? they're hoping that they're the worst team in the NFL and they get to draft Caleb Wood. Like, I just think if you have a chance to get the quarterback, you have to take the quarterback or you're hoping in the next one to three years that you're the worst team in the league again to get the first pick, which is ridiculous to keep going back. Like, everybody knows the NFL is based off if you have the best quarterback in the NFL, you have a very good chance to win. Wiggy just said it. I don't know if I want to bet against Patrick Mahomes because he's the best quarterback in the league. And we all look at their offense and say they don't have enough weapons, they don't have this, they don't have that. And then you always end the sentence, but they do have Patrick Mahomes. I think that is the difference for all of these teams. 
Caleb Cruz is welcoming to everybody. <laughs> so come on aboard. All right, Devin, thank you as always for taking the time. We'll talk to you again next week.